Hey guys, welcome back to Chemistry 1032 Blended Instructional Videos. I am your host, Dr. Russell Betts, and I'll be guiding you through this chapter 8.5, Dilution. Now, notice we have ourselves some um, frozen concentrated orange juice. No problem. Hold on one second, guys. Uh, there we go. Notice we have ourselves some frozen concentrated orange juice. Now, here in Florida, we don't really know what that is because we just drink it fresh, right? But frozen concentrated orange juice is the way people, especially in the north, can get orange juice um, and pay a little bit less for it in the wintertime. Um, because, let's face it, shipping costs a lot of money. So they freeze and concentrate orange juice, and it usually comes in a can like this. And if you try drinking that, it's very challenging to drink because it's very tart. So why is it tart? Because it's concentrated, because it has a lot of uh, particles of solute per volume unit. Now... How you work with this stuff is you take one can of the orange juice concentrated and then you add three equivalents of that can. In other words, you fill the can up three times and dump it into this pitcher. Stir and enjoy. And that's called a dilution. Now, we add it, one can of frozen concentrated orange juice. And in the end, in this product, there is one can of frozen concentrated orange juice and three cans of water, okay? So the amount of solute in the dilution didn't change. We had one can of frozen concentrated orange juice and we end it with one can of frozen concentrated orange juice. It's just that by adding water, adding more solvent, the solute is spread over a larger volume and that's a dilution. So in a dilution, you add volume, you add solvent. When you do that, concentration goes down. So a dilution causes the concentration of something to go down. Now, um, basically that's what I just said. So, here's the formula that you might want to write down in your notes. C initial, V initial equals CF, VF. I usually write it like this. Oops, CI, VI equals C. F, V, F, where I stands for initial and F stands for final. So we have initial concentration, initial volume, final concentration, final volume. Easy enough. It looks just like Boyle's Law, okay? And it acts like Boyle's Law. It's very similar to Boyle's Law, to be honest with you. So let's see a problem. What is the final concentration if 115 milliliters of a 14.5% mass over volume solution of sodium chloride if it is diluted to a final volume of 500 milliliters. All right, so here's how I would solve this. C1 equals 14.5%. Let's try that one more time. 14.5%. And V1 equals, or sorry, this should be CI and VI, is 115 milliliters. C2, or I'm sorry, uh, I was taught C1, C2. Your book uses CI, CF, so I'll, I'll try to use the same thing the book uses. CF is the question mark. It's what we don't know. VF equals 500 milliliters. All right? So there's our three, un three knowns and our one unknown. We know the formula. CI, VI equals CF, VF. And we want to solve for CF. So divide, divide both sides by VF. So they'll cancel. So CF equals CI VI over VF. Let's plug some numbers in now. CI is 14.5%. VI is 115 milliliters. And VF is 500 milliliters. Notice milliliters are canceling, leaving us in a unit, a percentage. That's a concentration unit, so that's good. Now, before we even grab a calculator and crunch numbers, let's look at logic. We're adding solvent. We're going from 115 milliliters to 500 milliliters. So we're adding solvent. So the concentration had better go down. If the concentration goes up, we've made a mistake in our math. We put the wrong numbers in the wrong, right, we put the right numbers in the wrong place, if you will. 
Let's grab out your calculator, 14.5 multiplied by 115. Oops, let me do that again. Divide it by 500. Final, the final answer is 3.34%. Now, you're, you know, I rounded it. Your calculator may have given you like uh, 3.335. That's fine. Uh, we're not worried about rounded, right, rounding at this time. Uh, we're just worried about do you kind of get the idea of how to solve this question. Okay, so it's 3.34%, which is indeed, indeed, lower than 14.5, which means uh, the logic works. You add it volume, concentration came down. All right, that's pretty cool. Uh, now, this, there's also these things called dilution factors, and it's very simple. It's very simple. Let me, let me get my noggin out of the way here. Oops, that's not what I want to do. We're kind of getting some behind-the-scenes looks here. Uh, let me see here. Nope, display webcam. There we go. Okay, so now we're doing a dilution factor. So let's imagine again we're back to the can of that orange juice can. We have one can of orange juice right there, plus three cans of water. So that's a can. It's, it's my best attempt at a can of orange juice. It didn't come out very well. Let me get rid of that. That's just silly. So we have one can of OJ, one can of OJ, which is orange juice, three cans of water. So there's a total of four cans. That's the total amount of juice we created. So four cans is our total. So what you do for a dilution factor is you put down the volume you start it with. The volume you start it with is on the bottom. The volume you end up with is on top. So here we start it with one can. That goes on the bottom. Okay, one can goes on the bottom. We ended up with four cans that goes on top. So our dilution factor is four. So we diluted it by a factor of four. In other words, if we took one, it became four. If we take two, it'll become eight. Three will become 12. We just multiply, okay? Pretty simple. Now, that's 8.5. We're gonna stop the video there and we're gonna come back and talk about something that's very complicated but very fun to talk about, and that's osmosis. All right, guys? So now I want to wish you good luck and good chemistry.